That time someone took an interest in what's going on here. Rivers changing, trucks are acting up. People are going tropo, driven mad by the tropical heat. All well, places out of whack. Get out of the way, truck! Truck! Hey, hey. Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Howard Gorman from Cinema Chords. Uh, nice to Hi. speak to you and congratulations Hi. on Tropo. And first of all, thank you so, so much for completely offsetting my uh, moral compass. <laughs> because I've, I'm halfway through and the only two people I trust are the, probably the least two people I should be trusting. So I mean, that must have been a, it must have been a really kind of complicated uh, balance to get right to kind of, for the, the audience to empathize with you, but at the same time, Right. For us to know kind of that you've built, both been associated or even convicted with these things that I, I, I won't spoil for anyone who's not seen it yet. Yeah, you're right about that. You know, it, it was it's a very unique dynamic that Candace created. Any fans of mystery, murder mysteries and stuff, if they like that kind of stuff, check out Candace Fox's Crimson Lake. Um, me and my partner in crime, Courtney Penn, started Renegade Entertainment right before we uh, got, one of the first things that came across our desk was Trapo and, and what, an, what a couple of characters, what an engrossing read, what a, how fresh and unique, you know, Amanda and Ted have a relationship that's not father-daughter, it's not a romantic, it, it's, it's none of the things that, that you see over and over again in film. It's unique. They have a, a really interesting relationship. They don't necessarily like each other, but yet they're entwined together in, in, in as they pursue uh, some sort of resolution to the trauma that has, you know, destroyed both of their lives. And that mm -hmm. is really the, the, the glue that these two characters sort of are, are enmeshed in. Who are you? Me and you, boss, if you play your cards right. What the hell do you want? You're a cop. I need a consultant. I know that you were really drawn to Nicole as soon as she kind of came on, came in, in, into kind of the, the casting now. But rather than asking you, I'd rather ask Nicole, you what do you think started. that Thomas saw in you that thought that you kind of really play play off each other really well in this in the show? Um. I mean, the, the audition experience was very unique, um, you know, having the, you know, me being in my bedroom in Melbourne, Australia and Thomas in, in Montana, I think it was. Um, so that was, that was in itself was really unique. I think, uh, I don't know, how do you describe chemistry? I just think that there was something between him and I that just clicked and it was instant and we both felt it and the rest is history. Yeah, I don't, I don't know whether it was me. I just think it's the energy, it's chemical, that's it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm, I'm amazing uh, that it came across over Zoom, you know, halfway around the world staring at these little glass boxes. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think it could be done. You know, I was like, this isn't going to work. This whole pandemic thing is not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> but it, sure enough, the cold went really well. Yeah. I understand you've engaged private investigators. They found the car, detective. Do you have any idea who you're working with? That girl's a ticking time bomb. Don't talk about my past. Oh, but it's okay to talk about mine. What you did, dishonors all cops. The show is so good. I mean, I, I jumped straight onto Amazon and got hold of my the book straight oh, away. Yeah. Great. Obviously, there's three books in the series so far. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, I mean, if, if it goes down, I mean, obviously, it's gone down really well in Australia already. If it goes down really well internationally, are, are there already kind of cards on the table? Are you talking about a possible kind of second, third series? We absolutely are. We're taking uh, her second book, Redemption Point, and they're opening up the writer's room uh, in a matter of moments. And we're and we'll be. I'll be back halfway across the world, in uh, the tropical jungle. <laughs> you know, we're, we're surrounded by crocodiles and snakes and Amanda, and uh, and get back to it. We're looking forward to it. This job. It's the only chance to clear my name. There's been another killing and you're poking your nose in it with the person who tore this town apart. You got one instinct. And that's from blind and stupid. Hey, I trust you. Thomas, what is it like working over there in Australia? Because obviously it's kind of, it's almost, it felt almost like kind of Crocodile Dundee in reverse in a little way. Yeah. Seeing yeah. you over there. Did you feel that way in any, any way when you went to the film? <laughs> Absolutely. First of all, yeah. I want the utmost amount of respect for people who live 
uh, in Australia, especially where I was spent the most time, which is Queensland, which is far north. Now, north is is uh, in America, that would be south, right? So the further south you go, the hotter it gets. In Australia, the further north you go, the hotter, the hotter it gets. So we were up there in the tropical weather, in the heat, with sur- literally surrounded by animals that can kill you uh, on many days, running through the cane fields, and you know, stepping over snakes and shit. It was uh, it was an experience, but you know, I I have a newfound and uh, deeply felt respect for the Australian Northerners who have who have to be a tough lot to just to just get out of bed in the morning up there. You gotta you gotta have pretty made of, you have to be made of pretty strong stuff. Uh-huh. Well, listen, we're out of time. It's so good to speak to you. Really love the show. I can't wait for people to uh, get to binge watch it on the 20th of May. I wish you the best of luck and I hope to speak to you about the uh, possible second season sometime soon. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very it. much. All right. Cheers. All the best. Thanks. Take care. Have a good day. Thanks, Howard. Sometimes it's not so obvious why a person does what they do, but they take it to the grave. All we have is each other.